Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me again today in the corner booth celebrating our 72nd week. Sweeney clear the floor, Katie bar the door, Molly put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got a full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes on my blog and search all of our podcasts by typing in any search term you'd like. And yes, it's just one more free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. And you can also call me at 816-256-3360 to leave your comments, your family search, your song recitation on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, Foster is the name of the week. Mayo is the county of the month again. Cashel and Emily, Cloyne and Cary Parish Registers are opened. LDS and Irish Catholics quarrel over Irish records. Johnston in South Africa in the Zulu Wars. The top 16 sites in Ireland ranked among the world's top 1,000. I wonder how many of those you've seen. Oh, and searching for O'Donnell, Hendry, O'Connell, Shannon, McMahon, Brannigan, and Finn. And we've got two audio messages left for anybody who might be looking for a Kimidi or a Crossin, or a Mac Crossin for that matter. Hey, and that reminds me, you can get all three of my free podcasts online. Uh, there's three of them, and one is the Irish in America. Uh, we've done the Irish in Missouri on that section, and we've started on, just started on the Irish uh, uh, Lost Tribes of the Irish. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the last one is the Irish Song and Recitation Festival. That's a good one. We started up, uh, well, it's our newest one. It's not yet a year old, I don't think. Uh, but sure, be sure to check those out. It's free and it's fun. Time to move on to the notes for the week. Well, what's been happening around here at the cafe this week? We've got the Lost Tribes of the Irish started up on the Irish in America channel here at irishroots.com. Uh, we began that channel out as the Irish in Missouri, but as we finished the first 20 or so podcasts on that, we saw that we really needed a bigger scope. We wanted to cover anybody that might come up, and so we sure have. Last week, we spoke with uh, Maria, who is a longtime teacher of Irish dance down there in Georgia, and I tell you, that's in Savannah, and now there's a city with traditions. Uh, this week's episode, we continue on uh, the Irish in the South, and we talk with Walt Harper on the history of one of the largest St. Pat's parades in America, three quarters of a million people. Can you believe that? Right there in uh, Savannah. Talk about that and a whole lot more. So do be sure to go to our other podcast. It's on the webpage, and it's also on, uh, on iTunes. Uh, it'll be worth it if you have any interest at all in Irish history or heritage. And just one more note, uh, the new book search function is now up and running all, for 20 of our 60 Irish books at irishroots.com. That's a brand new function, and you can search an individual book by going to the individual books page and typing in the surname or the subject to see if it's in the index, and uh, the book will come up for you. And this in search, remember, is different from the master index search. That master index search is just the index, but uh, this is a computer search of the whole book. We're just trying it out, but uh, I think it's going to work out. It's been a lot of fun figuring out how it's all done, too. Well, now let's move on to the books of the month. Well, the first one we're going to have is the 1,001 Historic Sites You Must See before you die. 960 pages and the cost is 25 euros. Ireland has 16 places on the list, which is why I put it here. And some of them, some of the most important might not be included, but uh, perhaps these are supposed to be the 16 most popular. I bet you anybody that's been to Ireland has seen a few of them, but I bet you most people haven't seen all 16. Uh, listen to our curious news and notes at the end of this podcast for a detail 
on the entire list. And uh, my list would have been different, but then again, I don't know about all these sites either. So uh, that would be interesting to try to get to all 1,000 before I die. It all depends on how long you got to live, doesn't it? Well, let's move on to the second book of the month, and that's, once again, County Mayo, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. And we're going to put an extract from the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters on Mayo families. It lists all the uh, families uh, that are shown on the map in that book, that set of books. Uh, on the map, all the families there in Mayo. And uh, it's interesting to look at and see what families surrounded each other. And uh, the spellings of the names, the map was put together uh, in the 1800s, but it's for a time long before that, but you can see and it's separated into earls and lords and chiefs and princes. Uh, so it is interesting. It's, a, it's of some historical note. Uh, that's in the Canellan translation that we printed a few years back. And the list is two. I think there were 70 or 80 families actually put on the, the map, which is more than most, most counties. Uh, names like Barrett, Burke, and Brown, you might expect. And just going down through, I can't even cover half the alphabet here, but, you know, Finn, Finnegan, Flannery, Flynn, uh, Malley, Milford, O'Moran, O'Mulroy, O'Quinn, Rodden, Tierney, Toole, Pettit, Prendergast, Staunton, Sinnott, Taff, and McHale, <coughs> which is written on the map as MacHale. Uh, but take a look at our blog if you want to see that list or find a copy of... Uh, of our edition of the Annals of the Four Masters, and you would be able to see all 32 counties right at the same time. Well, let me see. What do we have coming up later in this episode? Can the Mormon Church baptize all the Irish Catholics and not get in trouble? I'm not sure. That might be something for the theologians to argue, but it's back in the news, so you might as well know what's going on. Uh, now let's move on to the member search list for the day. Time to raise our eyes skywards and give thanks and ask for help. Whether it be from the Catholic records or the Mormon records, uh, that's really not our problem at this moment. We're just looking for our families. And now let's go to the magnificent seven members for the week. Drum roll, please. Let's pick those out of there. We've got about 100 in here. We'll just take the seven. Here we go. New member Robert O'Donnell of Newport, Virginia. Searching for O'Donnell, Carr, Doucette, Smith, Todd, DeCourcy, and gives the place names of Boston, Nova Scotia, and County Galway. New member number two, Andrew Hendry of Atchison, Canada. A. Thomas Hendry left Northern Ireland for Massachusetts about 1740. Where in Northern Ireland did he come from? Uh, the family is probably Scottish Protestant planners, 1608-13. Hey, the one resource I got on that that's pretty good is the uh, Conquest of Ireland. It's a four-volume set, but it's got uh, a lot of names of the planners from Scotland that came into Northern Ireland right at that timeline. So it's good for, for uh, that date and all the years after if you're tracing a family back. It also lists the uh, Irish... Uh, uh, landowners and the condition of the land and some notes on hobbies and what kind of things people were doing and how the whole scheme was laid out uh, uh, to settle Northern Ireland uh, by the English crown. It's a pretty darn interesting work. Uh, number three, new member John S. O'Connell of Sebring, Florida. Your county carry book has shipped and John is searching for uh, O'Connell. Bernard, born 1842, County Kerry, immigrated to the U.S. 1865 and died 1911. Uh, and James Purcell, date of birth 1834, County Limerick, and he came to the U.S. and died in 1901. Number four, new member Carol Shannon of St. Louis, Missouri, says her Shannons are from Wexford and they settled in Callaway County, Missouri. Number five, new member Patricia McMahon of Conroe, Texas. Looking for info on Robert McMahon and Catherine Bryan, or O'Brien, who sailed for Virginia Colony in 1746. Need information on parents. Boy, you've done some research to get back to 1746. 
But you know, I'm noticing a few more people are now getting back into the 1700s and very seldom did I see that 30 years ago when I was talking to researchers at these festivals. Uh, number six, new member Aaron Brannigan of New Milford, New Jersey. And that Brannigan family came to Jersey City, New Jersey in May 1848. And they're looking for some new research resources. Uh, number seven of the lucky seven, new member Ian Finn of Salins, County Kildare, Ireland. Searching for others interested in Dennis Finn, 1767 to 1839. Kilfithmone, County Tipperary, Ireland. Also Tynans from Johnstown, County Kilkenny. And you know what? I guess, let me reach back in there to the back. I guess we'll call it a Baker's 7 here. Number 8, new member Mary Greaves of Calgary, Canada. And, uh... She's a new member, but she hasn't given us a search yet. So, uh, Mary, uh, be sure to send in what you're interested in, and I'll put it in our file so we might make some matches. Well, let's move on to the two audio searches for the week. Well, here we've got two searches that were left at our phone number, 816-256-3360. Uh, and uh, let's get to them right now. One is for the Kimedy family, that's K-I-M-I-D-Y, or anything close. And the other is for Crossan or Mac Crossan or Mac Crossan. We all understand that. If you've been listening for a while, those Macs and O's can get put on and taken off just, just uh, right away. So let's listen in right now to our two phone calls. <laughs> Hi, Mike. This is Mike from Kinalom, New Jersey. Love the show. Been listening for about a month now. I have a question for you. Um, I've been researching my girlfriend's family uh, from County Mayo, Ireland. The last name is Kimity, K-I-M-I-D-Y. We've been looking at the family for about two years now, and we really haven't been able to find much about them. Um, we know that my girlfriend's great-grandfather, whose name was Michael, was born in 1901 in County Mayo and that he came here uh, when he was in his teens. We know that his mother died when he was young and that his father was not allowed for some reason to care for him and his two sisters. So I actually have two questions. The first is if you know of any law that may have prohibited men from caring for children if they were widowed. And the second question is if you're familiar with the name Kimity. The family seems to think that the name may have been Kennedy at one point because they were unable to find any matches for Kimity when they went to Ireland, although there is a relative who claims that when they went to Ireland, they saw the name in the cemetery. Um, no one has been able to confirm or deny if they actually saw that name. They just claim that they had seen it quite some time ago. But as far as present-day records are concerned, there's almost nothing on Ancestry.com. I've looked at many, many websites and have been unable to locate anything on the name Kimity. Any help would be appreciated. Thanks, Mike. Love the show. Hi, I'm looking for my um, grandfather, great-grandfather, who was born in Derry, Ireland, and he was born there in 1857. Um, he left Ireland in 1881. Um, his name was William Crossan. It could be Mac Crossan or Mac Crossan. Um, but we think it is crossing, and we really, really would like to hear um, some information back if anybody has any. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, thanks for those notes and for calling in. And all of you out there, if you're really serious about finding your ancestors, just drop me a line or an email or an audio message if you can help uh, these researchers or if you'd like to leave your own notes. Uh, it, boy, it sure is an easy way to reach out to about 50,000 people. Now, I'd, I'd sure give it a shot if you had the time. And all you have to do is get in contact with me. If you heard anybody out there on these searches that you want to get in contact with, and I'll take care of it for you. Uh, and that reminds me, a big thank you to all of our members. Without you, we wouldn't have any of the podcasts or any of the books. So you've helped me over the years quite a bit, and I really do appreciate it. Well, now let's move on to the Irish family name of the day. Well, today's family name is Foster, and it's in honor of member Charles Foster, who's searching for Mary Foster from County Mayo to America. And this is only a guess of the county, they say. 
and they said it would have been in the last half of the 19th century. Boy, just you and a couple million others, I think. Uh, now we took a look here. What are we going to find? We will do a quick one here. Uh, uh, related spellings of the names taken from the master guide to various spellings of Irish family names. And you're going to find the name is sometimes confused or interchanged with Forster or Forrester. Uh, of course, the name being Foster in your case, but a lot of times Forrester is a name from which it can come or it is interchanged with. So keep your eyes out for that. And it's part of variant spelling group number 640. Now, if we go down to the Irish uh, Book of Arms and take a look at it, see if there's any arms for the family listed there, uh, documented coats of arms, by the way. Uh, here's some of the information we found in the Irish Book of Arms at a quick glance that's connected to the Foster name. And uh, from 1806, we see an illustration of the arms for Margareta Foster in County Louth. And it says she married John Foster of County Louth in 1764. And that was among the notes given in the heraldic work that I took it from. Now, let's see. We're going to move to the Master Index search of Irish names at irishroots.com. We find the Foster family 34 times in that Master Index. And let's just pull out six. So we had one too many uh, searches there, eight instead of seven. So instead of seven... Uh, in the free master index search, we're going to have six. And that way it all evens out. I just love the balance of it all. Now, the free master index search gives what? Anthony and Matthias Foster are found in the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society. Uh, Foster's Wagon is found in uh, Irish Families on the California Trail book. And Foster's of Farrard in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters is in that index. And Martin Foster's uh, in County, in, oh, in Londonderry Lands and Families, which is part of the Conquest of Ireland set. Uh, that's available individually as well as part of the set, Londonderry Lands and Families. And number five, F. Foster in County Galway, Genealogy and Family History Notes. And number six, E. Foster in County Kildare, Wicklow, and Carlow Genealogy Book. So that's a good note. There's plenty of those Fosters out there. We found quite a few just in a quick little browse, didn't we? Well, let's move on to the website of the week. Well, here it's a quick one there just connected to County Mail in case somebody's wondering. There's all kinds of resources on the web, but uh, here's one I found. It's CousinConnect.com. I'll have a clickable link on our blog. You can just click to it and go right there. And they have about 400 queries related just to County Mayo family uh, searches. So that might work. And if it does work, let me know. I'll pass the, the word on to everybody here. Well, hey, we're coming towards the end of it all, aren't we? We're down to curious news and notes. And the first one for today is, the good news is that the parish records being withheld from general distribution at the National Library in Ireland on microfilm are now being opened up. Yep, that's right. The Catholic parish registers for Cloyne, Kerry, and Cashel and Emily are now available on microfilm to visitors and researchers at the library in Dublin. So you can go there yourself or you can have a researcher say, hey, go look in this specific record and look for my family in, in, this year, in these years. And they ought to be able to do it at a very reduced rate. But the problem is the old brouhaha between the LDS Church and the Roman Catholic Church has erupted into news once again. Now, when I first started researching in Ireland, I was told that the LDS had come over and put almost all of the old Catholic Church records on microfilm for preservation. And this was, I think it was around 1980, late 1970s when I was talking to folks. But there was a big problem. Not one person told the parish priest or the bishops that the true underlying motivation for obtaining the records was to preserve them for baptism by the church of the Latter-day Saints. So needless to say, there were feelings of hurt and betrayal, according to these stories that I heard on a roadside, and there was not a small bit of embarrassment. I would imagine when Rome heard about it, well, who knows if these dead folks would appreciate being baptized into another religion. Uh, or would they even care? Or does it even matter? 
That's the question for theologians. But you know, if it had been the government who copied the records, the problem would be mute. But it was another church, so this small war of sorts began, and at any rate, you can still go to Ireland to see these records, or you can hire a researcher for a small fee to get a specific record for you. Uh, the records are not being withheld for researchers, or re withheld from we researchers, so to speak, but they're being uh, withheld from uh, uh, being copied and uh, stored by the LDS Church, who may be baptizing ancestors against their wishes. Well, it seems like the feud is likely to go on throughout the world. And as for me, I have bigger fish to fry, and honesty is the best policy after all. I'll leave each person to make up his own mind on this one. Well, let's see. Let's just go to number three, the last one. It said we read a... Oh, yes, we did. We read a book... Uh, that listed the top 1,000 historic sites in the world, and Ireland has 16 places on the list. You want to hear the 16? Now count them there, and if you're with a friend, or if you've got a friend that's been to Ireland, and you try to outdo each other all the time, you can see who's been to the most places, and that would give you a winner, an end to all this fighting. So I'll list all 16 of them here. I think I'll take a quite sip. Yeah, that's better. I have to get through all 16 of them. And they are Blarney Castle in County Cork, Clon Macnoise in County Offaly, the Derry Town Walls, Dublin Castle, the General Post Office in Dublin, the grave of W.B. Yeats in Drumcliff County Sligo, a Guinness Brewery in Dublin, the Hill of Terra in County Meath, Jurpoint Abbey near Thomastown County Kilkenny, Kilmainham Jail in Dublin, Newgrange in County Meath, Old Jameson Whiskey Distillery in Dublin, Oscar Wilde's House in Dublin, Prospect Cemetery in Dublin, The Rock of Cashel in County Tipperary, and Trinity College Dublin. Well, I definitely have put a couple of those on the list, and uh, I definitely would have left a couple of those out, but we've all got our own little tastes here. I think some of them might belong in the list of the top 10 breweries of the world uh, instead of the top 10 historical sites. But that was just very interesting, so I thought I'd pass it on and, and let me know. Has anybody been to all 16? Uh, if that's so, I'll just, uh, we'll make a special little badge up for you here and announce that uh, you'd be a very learned person. Well, we've got one final note here. Uh, it's a very unique plea for help. Johnston of Ireland in the Zulu Wars. I've only seen the Zulu Wars on television, and some of those movies are pretty silly, and uh, one of them was pretty good. It showed some historical accuracy and showed the Zulu were people too. Uh, but here's a letter. It said, Hi, Mike. Please, can you help? I'm from South Africa. My grandfather was born in Ireland. His name was Patrick Johnston Colity. He was born on the 17th of March, 1859. And I know his father's name was Michael and mother's name Bridget. We don't know where he was born. It may be Kerry. Patrick Johnston came to South Africa to fight in the Zulu Wars. He stayed and married here in South Africa. No one seems to know very much about him. It would, I would be most grateful if you could help with information about where he was born. Uh, they may have changed the spelling of the surname. I thank you in advance, Mary McGill. And her email is mary at donsdeliveries.com. And that's D-O-N-S-D-E-L-I-V-E-R-I-E-S dot -E -E com. So if anybody is an uh, expert on that, you might call in. Now, things are opening up in Cary, so uh, you might be able to find it with just a little bit of research. Check out... Uh, uh, the Cary County Library, and you might have to go to uh, a researcher to get some specific research, but gosh, you've got the dates, you got the names. I think you've got a leg up on the whole thing, and uh, it sure is doable. If I get a chance, I'll drop you a separate note and uh, give you some more advice there. Well, I think this brings us to the end of uh, today's podcast. Uh, now, sometimes I'm going to be doing one of our other two podcasts instead of this one on a Monday, so 
they won't all come out at the same time. Every once in a while, I just have to take a break and do one instead of two or three different shows each each week. So be sure to listen to them all. Stay updated on everything happening here at the cafe. And remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at www.irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address the old-fashioned way, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members and away. Oh,